Hi, I'm George Vaga, pop music critic for the San Diego Union Tribune, and we are very honored today to have the uh, lead singer and co-founding member of POD, Sonny Sandoval. Welcome. Hey, brother. Thanks for having me. In case you can't tell, we're both blinded by the light today, <laughs> but uh, we, will, we will persevere. <laughs> POD, one of the kind of pioneering go through nearly every type of idiom of music mm -hmm. bands in Southern California and beyond, uh, rap, metal, punk, <laughs> reggae. Um, you guys are 26 years old. Yeah. Um, go back a quarter century. You're these, these teenagers. That's right. Um, what was the goal then? Did you have any idea you would be here 26 years later? No. I mean, we, we were just kids having fun. Um, you know, it was a way to kind of avoid some trouble here in San Diego. You know, we were all going through uh, changes in our lives, um, spiritual, just just growing up, trying to figure out life, and um, music was a way to express that. And we never thought we'd leave San Diego. Um, it wasn't like we had some rock star, rock and roll, you know, dreams of Hollywood. And you know, it was just it was something we did. It was part of our lifestyle, and we did things independently, and we we kept at it. And things just you know, I feel lucky. I feel blessed. There's so much good music out there. There's so many bands. And not too many people um, get to do it 26 years later. POD, any fan will know, is payable on debt. Mm -hmm. But for people who may not know, why POD? Why payable on debt? Um, well, we were all young. You know, the guys were really into, you know, the, the kind of the metal scene. You know, and you had the big names like Metallica, you know, Slayer. Um, payable on debt still sounded tough. You know, at the time, one of the the girlfriends. Uh, she worked at a bank, and it was a it was a term, uh, it was a banking term when someone passes on what they leave behind. And here we were, this, you know, with this zeal and this passion to go and tell the world about our faith. And so, really, we related that to to our belief of Christ dying on the cross uh, for our sins. And but it wasn't this religious thing. It was still sounded tough, still sounded heavy, you know. It was three three words in the name, not just one. You know, all these crazy stuff, and payable on death just sounded cool, sounded tough. And, you know, but after a while, you just you shorten it up, and it becomes POD. <laughs> POD has a, uh, a new album coming out called Circles. Mm -hmm. um, you worked with an LA production team called The Heavy. Yep. We've also worked with uh, The Dirty Heads. Um, really strong album, and it has some new elements. Could you talk about that? It definitely does. I mean, we've been through our ups and downs, and you know, we're so jaded by the music industry, you know, um, and the only thing that is um, constant is is our fan base, you know, and the loyalty of our fans, and we st still get to play around the world, and that's just because there's still people out there that love what we do, um, and then but going in this time, you know, you it's the ups and downs. It's like you love making records, but then you hate it because who buys records, and you still have to deal with label politics and all these things, but. Um, we changed it up a little bit by going with the heavy. They're used to working with pop artists and alternative artists. And we really went in with an open mind to even possibly co-write, which we've never done. You know, we just kind of go in and say, this is our music, just hit record and we'll do our thing. Whereas this time it was like, we just, yeah, we want, we, we, we want some outside opinions, you know? We want some guys that are a little bit younger that maybe, um, you know, just, they're not as jaded by the industry as we are, you know? So they really brought some excitement to it. We were very open-minded to allow them to have opinions and um, to try things, and we did that. It's not the heaviest record we've ever done, um, but it's not also it's not so unfamiliar either. We, it's elements that we've incorporated in our music for 26 years, so it's not there's nothing shocking on there. If anything, it's just more of like, oh, okay, the, the guys decided to make a record like this, not like, oh, this new, never done before record. You've you've always heard these elements of, of this side of the band, right? Uh, the opening cut, Rockin' with the Beat. Rockin' with the Best. The Best, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, Rockin' yeah. with the Best. Um, you kind of throwing down the gauntlet there with the lyrics? A little bit, you know. It's For me, it's more like, um, I'm, I'm a, as we said earlier, I'm, I'm an old school guy. I'm big on respect. Uh, you know, a lot of times with these young kids, they have so many things handed to them, you know, even when it comes to music. Nobody's paid their dues. No one, no one respects where it comes from. Most of these kids think that they're doing something new and they're in, in creating something. And this is a, this is a, a sound that POD has pioneered. It is a Southern California, and I, I give, I will fight to the death. This is a San Diego sound. 
I know LA might disagree. I know New York might disagree. This is a San Diego sound. There's no other melting pot in the world that comes with these style of, of flavors. Um, you know, and I just want people to recognize and you know, today also just own own your, your craft and, and have some integrity and some honor, just even in how you do music and what you're talking about and what you're saying. Um, but again, most people are so used to things being handed to them um, that they don't, they've, they've never paid any dues. And uh, like I said, 26 years, it's not a pat me on the back or pat my band on the back. It's just, you know, I just want, I just want people and bands to show respect. The title track to uh, Circles, is that a, a cautionary tale? How would you describe it? I mean, the song itself, it's not a, it's not a, you know, as a whole, it doesn't really describe the record. You know, the, the record really is just this vibe and it's a, it's a bunch of, you know, different songs and it has this vibe. That song is, um, you know, the chorus says, I'm spinning in circles. So it's really more about a situation, an un unhealthy situation, whether whatever you may go into. It's, uh, it's, it's up to the listener to kind of interpret that, you know, whatever they're going through. And sometimes, um, especially in today's world, um, we find ourselves lost most of the time, just confused. Life is so quick these days, you know. Um, and so it's just, it's just in trying to encourage, again, that, that hope of, of finding ourselves out of that situation and, and really um, hoping that tomorrow is going to change and tomorrow will get better. Um, and also to take caution in the things that we're into and the things that we do and the things that we allow to consume, you know, not only our, our minds, our heart, but our soul, you know? So I like, I like that, I like caution. <laughs> As you know, longevity is not the rule in music. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like the flavor of the month, you're yeah. here, you're gone. What do you credit uh, the fact that POD has been here for 26 years? Well, I, honestly, I, I just believe it's, it's, it's the realness, it's the integrity. I think there's still people out there. It's a small percentage, but there's still those of us out there that recognize what is real and what is true, what is work, you know, what, and what is quality. Um, again, we live in a day and age where there's, there's just so many sheep out there. They're, they're force fed so many things, but there's still, um, you know, there's still some of us out there that, that, that love it. We wouldn't be doing it after 26 years if these people still weren't coming out, showing love, Given us support, um, and it really is a—it still is a passion of ours after 26 years, um, and we take it one day at a time. Some bands kind of find a, a meaning to their life mm -hmm. by making their music. Some bands, literally or figuratively, find salvation through music. Mm -hmm. How about you guys? Um, actually, it's the opposite for me. I found my own personal salvation in my faith, and I didn't know what to do with it. Here it was I was trying to allow it to, um, you know, shape me, inform me. And as this young um, teenage kid, you know, I just lost my mother. Uh, music was kind of, a, it was a comfort for me. Um, and here I was going through these changes and uh, all these thoughts and, you know, things that I wanted to express. And when I was given the opportunity, um, I took it. And I, I thought, you know, if, and I never dreamt of this or thought that I would do it. I don't consider myself a singer or even somewhat of not even really a musician. I just it kind of really fell on my lap. My cousin's a drummer. My best friends are the you know, they were in the band. Um, but I knew if I had that mic in front of me, I was going to scream something. And uh, and I took the opportunity. Would it be accurate to say that your faith and your music are stronger than ever? Uh, 26 years has been a wild ride, and rock and roll will definitely test that. And we've been through our ups and downs. All of us, we're on different levels. Um, you know, there's, as you grow, as you mature, you know, things change. Your political ideas, you know, just religious ideas, all kinds of things change. We've been through the ringer, you know, we're no longer these, you know, these kids from down south, uh, San Isidro, National City, San Diego, you know. Um, we've had the experience to um, just to listen and to be involved, um, you know, just in a, in a growing world. Me personally, my faith is stronger than ever. Um, it's what uh, it's what fuels me. It's what you know keeps me married married for 22 years. You know, it keeps my grounded with my kids. It keeps me wanting to still do music because it means something to somebody. Um, and without it, I think I would just be lost. Uh, your 2012 album, Murdered Love, mm. which is a very good album. I had a song on it called I Am mm. that created quite a bit of controversy in the Christian music community mm. because of the use of one 
four letter yeah. word beginning with the letter F, never mind that the song would not work without that letter and it's not like you were praising that word, no. you were using it to make a point. Is there anything on this album that you think might rile up the uh, more conservative uh, Christian music community? No, not at all. It's very straightforward and safe, um, but not that, that um, it doesn't sway me either way. It, for that time, it was something that needed to be said. Um, I never considered ourselves a, a Christian band. I would never use my faith to market um, a band. We, Even though you were often called a Christian rap metal band? We were often called a lot of things, whether it was rap core, new metal. We've been called, we've been called it all. Um, I think us being so open about our faith, faith and very upfront and in your face can come off sometimes as, as intimidating. And so we were just labeled that Christian band. But that was an uncommon um, term back then. Now that POD has sold millions of records, it's okay for the music industry to sign Christian bands and not just keep them in Nashville on a little Christian label where they, once, once the, the big dogs found out that there's actually money to be made and a lot of money to be made, oh, as soon as we sold, it's not like the label signed us and said, I really want to, I want to, I want to push you in your belief in your faith and I want to see you reach the masses. They didn't say that. They, they didn't care less. Right? Even if, even if they hated what we were about, the moment we sold a million records, they don't care because they don't care about the message either way. They care about making money. So as soon as we made or sold records, they came to us and said, who else do you know? Like if we were the, you know, <laughs> if we were the president of the Christian industry, the music industry, and we, you know, the king. Um, but we, yeah, we, sh we told them, well, there's a good band here. You know, there's a band called Project. There's a band called Skillet. There's a band, you know, there's hardcore bands. And sure enough, people scoop them up. They make their dollar off them. It's not like they care about their cause, their message, or their heart or soul. Um, and now, it's, now it's, a, it's, a, it's a genre, Christian metal or Christian whatever. We've never put ourselves in that. We definitely didn't sell almost 12 million records to Christians. If anything, just because we're Christians or believers doesn't mean that, that they're buying our record. If anything, we've had a more problem with the Christian community because we weren't Christian enough. When we, 26 years ago, Christians didn't have tattoos, supposedly. Christians didn't play music like this, supposedly. All these things that they put you in a box in, and POD broke all that. Because we didn't come off and say, we're, we're choir boys, or we have it all figured out, or our faith is better than yours. We just said, this is what I believe. I'm just a kid from the streets trying to scream it out to the world. Will anybody listen? And then people started to listen. And then the moment people start to listen, here comes those people that didn't really care about you that want to put a tag on you and said, these are my guys. Mm -hmm. We were never your guys. <laughs> I don't think we, we're still not your guys. And so with a song like that, it definitely says, oh, no. But it doesn't matter because it's been countless people that I've spoken with that says, man, that song is, it means the world to me. The, the world is very different than 25 years ago. The yeah. music world is very different. So your song on the radio, mm -hmm. um, radio mattered a lot 25 years ago to a, yeah. a young band or you know, a very well-known band. Yeah. Um, do you get played on the radio now? How important or not is it? I mean, it's still important in some aspects. I mean, for guys that have been around, you know, like us. Um, but, and, and Trust me, I welcome any type of radio spins we can get, but it's like that is that is the wizard behind the curtain that's telling these kids or whoever's listening, this is what is good. And that's not necessarily the case. Now, now, does it expose the band? Does it even maybe increase albums? Not so much album sales, because no one buys albums, but you know, the, the, the ticket buyer to a concert? Yeah, of course. But it's not the, the tell-all of what is what you should be listening to. And nowadays, that wizard behind the curtain plays the same five bands all the time. It doesn't matter what they, they put out. They can, they can just they can throw up on a, on a record and they'll still get played. So that's that thing of just wondering why, why is that? Who, who's the wizard that says these are the five bands you're going to listen to and that's it? And all of a sudden, the rest of us, and it's all kinds of music, and every rest of us are walking around like zombies just eating up what they feed us. And that's goes beyond the radio, that goes on in television, goes on in everything in life. And I guess it's just for, for me trying to take a step back and, and not be influenced by whatever they're telling us.
Um, I interviewed Katy Perry about a month or two ago, mm -hmm. and she fondly recalled doing backing vocals for you yeah. guys on yeah. a, a TV show back in the day. Um, and I'm wondering if you remember that particular. Oh yeah, no, she's she's lovely. She um, she did more than that. She did a video with us. She recorded um, on our record. We were recording a record with uh, Glenn Ballard at the time, and and she was kind of his protege, and and. We would just say, man, this song would really sound nice with some lovely, you know, some beautiful uh, female vocals over the top. And he said, I have, I have the girl. Um, and she came and she was, super, she was still young at the time. And, and she was part of the Christian music community then. I didn't even know that. I mean, I, we just met her for the first time. But, you know, what was awesome about that time, which I remember, say, I don't know Katy Perry the diva. I know Katy Perry the, the tomboy who came in, you know, acting like one of us, picking her nose and being goofy having you know dinner with us and we were, we'd sit around like a family um, that's that's the kid I, I know you know and she went on to become Katy Perry <laughs> which is which is crazy but when you're around 26 years we, we, we see it all we've seen I see guys now and there's guys that are in bands now that were giving us their demo years ago and they're on top of the world mm -hmm. and they don't remember you you know what I mean and so it's that kind of that's the industry so I'm just glad she remembered that P.O.D. will be performing November 18th in uh, San Diego at the Music Bugs. Uh, very cool uh, triple level venue downtown. Yeah. Um, you're going to be playing the whole album, part of the whole new album? No, we'll be, um, we're on tour with some really cool bands. And uh, I, we'll, we'll play a few songs. The record will, I think, will have just released the day before. Um, we'll, play, we'll play a few songs off the new record just because it's fun for us. Um, but 26 years, so many albums deep. Sometimes you can't just play all new stuff, you know. And we're known um, for a, a lot. You know, we've we've been lucky to have some hits. So no matter where we go, you have there's just so many songs you have to play. So you're going to be doing Youth of the Nation, <laughs> of course. And you know, luckily for us, we've had some 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 known songs. So by the time you even do those known songs, you know, you're really running out of time unless you're doing some marathon three hour set, you know. But these days tension span, everything's short, you just kind of go in there, you know, you hour and a half and you're gone. People got to go to work and <laughs> get to bed. 26 years ago, you, wrapping things up here, you were kids, mm. teenagers, you formed the band. 26 years later, um, your family guys, you've got three <laughs> kids, your daughter just started <laughs> San Diego State. So what do you see in the coming 25, 26 years? You know, I my number one priority is being a husband and being a daddy. Um, after that, everything really else really just is a, a bonus. Uh, I am blessed by music and to be in this band, but it never it never has defined me. It's just opened up great opportunities um, for me to live out uh, my faith. So I'm involved in community. I'm involved in outreaches. I I have a heart for young people who are just going through the the muck and uh, and I view them because I am a daddy and I and that's how I see them and my heart is my heart is for people and music has always just been a, a, a an avenue to say that they we would get just a couple more minutes you know kids will actually listen it's not sometimes they're turned off to maybe just anybody who would want to share something with them but then they look at someone like me that makes music or has tattoos or is cool and then it's like yeah I'll listen to your story and it's the story that's powerful. I'm not the powerful one. And um, wherever that story may lead me, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to follow it. Great. POD, November 18th at the Music Box uh, on tour to promote their powerful new album, Circles. Mm -hmm. um, and for more information, people can go online too. Payable on Death is our website. You can get all your information. There's no other Payable on Death website that'll give people Pay weapons or... Would... <laughs> no. WWW Payable on Debt. That's it. And all, obviously, all the social media is POD, uh, whatever these kids are into these days. It's understandable. Thank, Thank you, you very much.